Do you feel frustrated trying to grow your franchise? Are you having trouble balancing your consumer and franchise development marketing? Do you wish there was an easier way? Imagine if you had a proven roadmap to take your franchise's marketing from costing you to making you money. That's why we've created the Franchise Growth Blueprint. We walk you through the exact same process that we use to run franchise marketing campaigns for our clients at scale that has resulted in triple digit growth. This blueprint isn't for anyone. It's not for people just starting a franchise. It's not for franchises without long-term goals. This is for franchises that want to scale up their marketing in a predictable and profitable way using a proven roadmap. If you want to sell more franchises, keep your current franchisees happy, and learn from people who have already done it, go to FranchiseGrowthBlueprint.com and sign up today. That's FranchiseGrowthBlueprint.com. Hello, everyone. Welcome to another episode of the Franchise Marketing Podcast. Today, I have Mark, Matt Sharp, which is the CEO and founder of Kid Strong. Matt, welcome. Thanks for having me. No problem. So for those who don't know you, I'd love to hear a little bit more about yourself and your franchise. Yeah, so uh, I have a little bit of an entrepreneurial background. I worked for the government for 10 years before I, I kind of uh, cut ties and went to the entrepreneurial world. Uh, Kid Strong is a startup that me and my wife started. Uh, originally for our daughter, Ella. Megan was a PE teacher for seven years and had seen the kids were progressively worse entering the school system every year. Uh, it wasn't just physically, it was a lot of social and emotional uh, development that was lacking. So when our daughter was 15 months old, um, and my background is in technology and fitness, so online gaming, online marketing, uh, and then some boot camp and CrossFit gyms. So um, when Megan came to me, she's like, you know, we need to get Ella into something. And Ella was 15 months old. And, you know, where do you take a 15 month old? And, you know, from a background in boutique fitness, you know, you just assumed there was a place where you could take a child and there would be coaches and there'd be some sort of curriculum and programming. And, you know, there were a few brands that were probably 30 to 40 years old, kind of in the space. And, Nothing that we saw was anything, you know, what we were looking for. Uh, a lot of these brands had, you know, gotten a little stale. And it was just, to be honest with you, it was like a lot of dancing with kids, like high school kids playing with your kids for 45 minutes, and then you leave. And it just wasn't what we were looking for. You know, we really wanted to focus on empowering our daughter, uh, just, you know, creating a lot of confidence, uh, not just physical strength, but like a, a lot of emotional strength, social, social and emotional development. So that was kind of the general idea for Kid Strong was that curriculum and kind of that base. So we started that, you know, I think we're going on four years now. And the first few years, uh, complete side gig. I was president of a tech company. You know, we had gyms and, you know, we were just doing it out, you know, whatever spare time we had, you know, we were in a warehouse next to a existing gym that me and a partner owned, and it was very bare bones for the first, you know, year, year and a half, but it really allowed us to kind of test a lot of concepts, really work really closely with the, um, with the parents and really develop something cool. And it led to uh, us moving the family to Dallas to open the first standalone location about two years ago. And since then, you know, the locations have really hit the ground running. We have seven open now. We have about 80 locations sold as of this year. Um, and, you know, it's, it's been a little bit of a whirlwind, but there was, it really started to ramp up like end of last year, early this year. But there was years, you know, of work that kind of went into being in the right position to do that. Mm -hmm. So those are the cliff notes. I love it. Yeah. So, um, you know, your, your wife is your co-founder. How do you find managing that personal and business relationship? Yeah, it's unique, but I think one of the things, you know, our goal was really to, and this sounds kind of funny, but our goal was really to hack life. And what I mean by that was, you know, I had a, had a really good job as a president of a tech company. 
I didn't get to see my kids and family as much as I would like. Uh, me and my wife didn't see each other as much as we would like. So, if, you know, one of the ways that we could kind of hack our life was to create some sort of business where we got to work together and we were around the kids all the time. So Kid Strong really became kind of that life hack. And there, there's a whole host of benefits uh, from being around your family and being around your kids more. Um, kid, kids, I, I, I personally think that raising a kid in a small business is probably the best education that kid can ever have. Um, they just learn things that are not taught to normal kids about persistence and ownership and customer service. And, you know, I think when kids used to grow up on farms and it was the family business, you were able to spend a lot of time really mentoring your kids and really kind of instilling these values into them. But as you know, both parents work outside of the home and the kids go to school, like those, those kind of ties have been broken. So mm -hmm. one of the ways, you know, for us to hack that was to create this business where we could all be together all the time. And, you know, a huge byproduct of that is, you know, we have some of the best child development coaches in the world and they work with our own kids. You know, when we have franchisees that come to town uh, or potential franchisees to come to town to look at studios, you know, we take our kids with us. They take the classes, you know, we're in the back meeting and they're taking the classes and, you know, it's, it's a very unique kind of relationship that we all have. Um, but it, it also attracts a lot of like-minded parents and like-minded owner operators who, who see that life and they want that type of life. And so they're attracted to, to kitchen as well, but you know, it's not, it's definitely not easy. Um, it's never off. You know, we work, we're either working or with the kids 24 seven, especially since, you know, COVID hit, we've had to launch a lot of new stuff. Mm -hmm. So it's a unique relationship, but it, you know, I wouldn't trade it for anything. Awesome. I, I, I love to hear that. So you brought up a good point. Um, this whole COVID situation going on. Um, I'd love to hear a bit more about how you've been adapting uh, to yeah, this. So we, we won a tech competition about a, year, two, about a year and a half ago for basically taking, it was kind of a shark tank style competition for taking our curriculum that we had developed in the studios and putting it online. Mm -hmm. And we were, we were spending probably 5% of our resources on that. Um, in the background because the, the studios were really taking off and we had people flying in all the time to see them. So we weren't able to focus on the online piece as much as we would like. Uh, as COVID started in, started kind of becoming more of an issue in China and you can see it starting to creep toward us. Uh, I remember it was probably, you know, two to three weeks before it hit our area that we, you know, it was just like keeping me up at night that, you know, if this thing comes and we're not ready for it, um, it could, it could really hurt us. And, you know, we have, you know, we had about, we have about 2,500 families, you know, in the program. There's just a lot of relationships and value that we add, you know, over time that we just didn't want to like, if the studio stopped, we didn't want that to cease. So I remember we had a meeting with our tech team and we were like, you know, this thing that we've been working on on the side, like we have to make it live, like as soon as possible. Mm -hmm. And I think we probably did two months worth of work in 10 days to get it live. And, you know, we call it Kid Strong University. And Kid Strong University went live two days in all the studios before we were forced to shut down by mandate from the, from the governor. So instead of actually you know, closing the studios, we just transferred everybody's membership to this online portal that we had developed. And as of today, I think we've created almost 300 pieces of content for the families of different age groups and testing lots of things as well. So any, you know, a silver lining for us is that we were able to kind of really push forward on this thing that had been, you know, somewhat on the shelf for a while. And because our longer term goal for Kids Strong is, is not to just be a brick and mortar business. It's to be, you know, whatever families need and whatever, you know, whatever that looks like. And, you know, there's, we really look at our online and our studios like Disney plus and Disney, Disney plus and Disney don't compete with each other. You know, you can't always go to Disneyland, but with Disney plus you can always get like, you know, an aspect of that 24 seven, 365, you know, as a family. 
And, you know, most of our families come to the studios once a week. So we want that to be like going to Disneyland. And then when you're not in the studio, we want it to be like our online piece to be like Disney plus and those things play really, really well together. So it, you know, a mixed blessing for us is that we were able to kind of get it launched and get it into the family's hands and test a lot of stuff that we just normally would not have had time to test because we were so busy in the studios. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Love it. So uh, another franchise founder that I was talking to uh, who's in the fitness space um, was tackling shifting culture um, and the energy of working out with others around you to the virtual world. So how have you find, uh, found shifting that uh, for Kids Strong? It's tough. Uh, I think that the benefit that we have is that we are a coaching culture and, you know, we hire the best of the best in coaches and they're just, they're very adaptable. You know, they just, they have a presence about them. They have relationships with the families and, it, you know, I think if we didn't have that, it would have been much tougher to shift over to online. Mm -hmm. I also think a lot of people just assume, you know, you can take whatever you did in brick and mortar and just record it and that everyone will like it just as much as if they were there. But, you know, there's common sense should tell you like that doesn't make any sense. You can't, you could not walk around Disneyland with a video recorder and that would, that would not be the same thing as going to Disneyland. And this is, you know, these are analogies we use with the team. Uh, online's different. You know, tension spans are shorter. It has to be crisper. You know, you have to do a lot of things that might not work in the studio. And, you know, one of the big learnings for us was you want to take the principles and things that work in the studio, but you have to put them in the online lens. And you have to put yourself in the shoes of an online consumer who's watching you through like a little tiny box. They're not there. They're not interacting with you personally. They're, there's the smells and the equipment, you know, the vibe just isn't the same. So you have to, you know, you have to bring a different level of experience when you do that. So for us, you know, it started out very much as, you know, whatever we did in the studio, let's, let's put it online. And then over time it's changed dramatically to, you know, what's the best experience for the families online. You know, what's the best time domain? You might be able to hold people's attention in a studio for an hour, but an hour online is a long time, you know, unless like there's lots of bells and whistles, you know, it's just very different. So I think one of the biggest things we did was just test everything really early. Mm -hmm. And even now I probably have five to 10 calls a week with families that are using the online product. And I'm just like, what do you think? What do you think about this? What do you think about this content? Is it too long? Is it too short? You know, do you like when we change this? Do you like when we do this? And, you know, every, I think the big thing for us is, and we, when we talk about this with our team a lot, every week we have to be better than the week before because this is completely new territory. And every week we really need to make about a month's worth of progress in the product because we're just, you're hyper-focused on it. You know, we're not in the studio. So we have coaches now obsessing over online programming because they're not in the studio programming, you know, and like I said, we've been able to crank out, you know, almost 300 pieces of content in like six weeks, six or seven weeks. And it's just because like we shifted everything to that. Wow. Sounds like uh, one heck of, ex of, an ex of an experience so far. <laughs> it's, been some, it's been a whirlwind for sure. Yeah. So, so we looked at it from like a cultural and operational perspective. I'd love to hear how you're managing growth and marketing um, during the, the COVID crisis and now that uh, there's this hyper focus on uh, Kids Strong University. We'll get right back to the show, but do you feel frustrated trying to grow your franchise? Are you having trouble balancing your consumer and franchise development marketing? Do you wish there was an easier way? Imagine if you had a roadmap to take your franchise's marketing from costing you to making you money. That's why we've created the Franchise Growth Blueprint. To find out more, visit FranchiseGrowthBlueprint.com. That's FranchiseGrowthBlueprint.com. Now back to today's episode. Yeah, so when the studios had to suspend classes, we, sh we basically shut all of that studio marketing down because we were not able to, you know, if you have some lead come in, we we're not able to have them come in for a trial. Mm -hmm. um, 
So we basically took all that attention and shifted it to like internal marketing to get all of our people onto Kidstrong University and then external marketing to learn as much as we could because, you know, like Disneyland and Disney Plus, there's a lot of kids that will never have the opportunity to go to the actual Disneyland, but they can have access to Disney Plus. Mm -hmm. So during that time, it was this huge internal push. Let's get everybody on the platform. Let's learn as fast as we can. But it was also externally, let's really start testing and figuring out like if somebody can never come to a studio, you know, what type of product would they like? Also, a big focus for us is adding value to our franchisees. So if we can blanket, you know, states or regions or countries with Kidstrong University, it's much easier to backfill with physical locations after you've built an audience, you know. Um, and, you know, we still, I, me and my partner are still on the CrossFit gym. And, you know, we've had our CrossFit gym for almost 11 years now. There were, you know, there were a lot of people that opened a CrossFit gym that had no business experience, no marketing experience. Like they were literally like a lawyer one day and they were a gym owner the next day. And, you know, in the early days you would have 50, you know, to 75 people sign up because you were the only, you know, one of those in town. But what I think a lot of people miss is that CrossFit.com had spent, the, you know, two to three years before that building an audience online of really like hardcore, you know, fanatics. So you being able to open one and fill it quickly was not because, you know, you were such a good business guy. It was because they had built this audience online, you know, for years before. And the natural extension of that is like, where can I go do, you know, this at home, you know, in my hometown, which is, you know, Disney plus online. And then now Disneyland is in their backyard. And I think for us, one of the things we're, we're really trying to do for our franchisees is, you know, if we can build that audience first, then when you do actually put a physical location there, you have access to those leads. You know, your pre-sales can be in the digital product while they're waiting for the physical location to offer, uh, to open. And I think it's just, you know, for us, it's just a shift in mindset from, are you only brick and mortar or are you just whatever is best for families? And the brick and mortar is the highest, you know, version of that experience. And we really do feel like all these things work together. Mm -hmm. that, that's really interesting. Um, it reminds me of Lean Startup by Eric Ries. I'm, I'm not sure if it's you've read it. It's a great book. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 It, like once you said, oh, backfilling with virtual and then launching brick and mortar, that, that's, it immediately popped into my head. Um, very, that's a great, great book. Oh, fant fantastic. I, I, think, I think a lot of businesses, I think one of the benefits we had versus other franchises in our space was that, you know, if your franchise is 30 or 40 years old, you know, you've been doing the same thing the same way for 30 or 40 years. And, you know, consumers are very different now than they were, you know, we're, you know, I'm a different parent than you would have tried to get, you know, 40 years ago. You know, I don't necessarily just have to do one thing. Yeah. I just want whatever's best for my family. And there's times where, you know, we want to go to like a place and there's also times when we're just home and it's raining you know, what do we do now? And I think Kidstrong just has this goal of like, we want to fill all that space with great curriculum and great resources for parents. So if you're in the studio, great coaching, science-based training, it's built for the parents. And if you're at home, you get all of those benefits at home as well. But to, to us, it's like one organism. And these are just different channels by which, you know, parents, you know, get the content. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, it sounds like you're really digging down into your, your why, like, um, mm -hmm. like that, that talk by Simon Sinek. Um, yeah, on really talk, famous talk. We've shared it many times with the team. It's a great Very book cool. too. Very cool. So um, what advice would you give someone just starting out in the franchising world? Oof. Uh, franchising itself is a completely different business than whatever business you're in. Um, and I think, you know, going into that, going into the franchising, knowing that whatever your product is, you can be completely obsessed with the product. You can have the best product in the world that has nothing to do with the franchising side of the business. It's a completely separate business. There's a completely separate skill set there. And, you know, again, one of the things that I think we did early on that really helped us 
is, you know, we are a organ, we are an organ organization of eternal students. You know, we always say the best idea wins and, you know, we didn't have any experience in franchising early on. So we added those people to the team that had experience. And a lot of our area developers have way more experience than us in franchising. And we just, we just listen to them. You know, you want to listen to people that have done this before. And, you know, we are definitely not trying to reinvent the wheel, you know, with our product, we want to reinvent the wheel, but with franchising, and processes, you know, there are proven things that work. And, you know, our goal is not to spend a lot of time recreating manuals, recreating FDD docs. Like we need to just take what works there and just use that. Um, but again, you have to have people on the team that understand that or you will get destroyed in the franchising world. There are, there are legal requirements that, you know, that people could not, you know, you know, they could never imagine how much legal goes into franchising, just the franchising documents. And even when you start selling franchises, there's, you know, there's, there's hundreds of rules as, as far, you know, that go along with selling a franchise that have nothing to do with like your product. So, you know, my advice would be to, and this is my advice for almost anything, find somebody that's really good at it and just connect with them and just listen to them and do what they say, you know, try to follow their lead as much as possible and then you can spend more time focusing on the thing that's more unique and the thing that's more of an art form for you and not trying to recreate the wheel. For sure. I love it. I, I couldn't agree more. Yeah. So what's keeping you up at night now? What's, what's really getting under your skin at, at this point in time? I think our big focus is, you know, how, how do we, how do we continue to evolve the company and how do we continue to stay ahead? Um, and we're just obsessed with that because even, you know, every six weeks ago, what people wanted is not the same thing they want now. Um, six months ago, it's obviously very different than it is now. So it's really hard to plan way ahead because there are so many unknowns. So I think, you know, the thing that really like keeps us up is, you know, how do we put ourselves in the, in the position of our families and given everything that's going on, how can we be, how can we provide the most value based on the things that we're really good at? Mm -hmm. And, you know, that's, that's again, where like the product has to get better every week. You know, it, it might look very different than it did, you know, even like six weeks before because the consumer has adjusted, the world has adjusted and the things that work, you know, six weeks ago don't work anymore. For sure. Cool. Very cool. So we are getting to the end and I like to end each uh, episode with what I call lightning round. So just okay. fast paced, easy. Oh, easy sweet. I like this. Awesome. So first question, what is your favorite tool or app that you cannot live without? Oh, I mean, I just downloaded five minute journal again. Um, but I would say business wise, well, I'm a big fan of spark email. I don't know if anybody uses it, but it's, it basically treats emails as task instead oh. of emails. So I can snooze them. I can look at them later. Um, so that's definitely one that I'm in all day, every day and Slack, you know, we're in Slack. We live in Slack. So, yeah. <laughs> I hear you. I hear you. Yeah. I actually have the, the physical book of five minute journal and I, I had one and I, and I used it and I'm, I like the app cause the reminders. Um, mm -hmm. but I think it's a really good daily practice for sure. So speaking of books, what is your favorite book? I would say if you, if you have to say like, what's, what's the one book I send out the most good to great. It's just like one of those books that you can read, you know, every year and, and pull something out of it. I would say the one book that I've given the most lately is building a story brand by Donald Miller. Mm -hmm. uh, Cause a lot of people have great ideas, but you know, best ideas don't win. It's the ideas that people understand and kind of fall in love with. Um, but I good to great's, basically required reading for anybody on our HQ team. And, you know, for some people they might think it's really basic, but you know, championships are won on people that, you know, hammer the basics. So that's, that's probably one of my all time favorites. Sweet. Who is the franchise leader that you look up to most? Oh, uh, we love watching orange theory. Um, we have a lot of area developers that came from orange theory um, we have our COO was a former Orange Theory owner. Um, 
they just, they, it's just been amazing to see what they've done in the fitness space. And it's not scattered either, like other brands that just get scattered. Um, you know, when you walk into one of those locations, they all feel like the same, you know, you get the same level of experience, you know, the branding is very tight. So we love watching them. Uh, but again, we want to be multi kind of faceted. So we also watch Peloton a lot and kind of watch what they're doing. Cause we, you know, our goal is to kind of be both of those in one, uh, as one experience, but you know, those are two that we really pay attention to. Very cool. And last question, Matt, where can people find out more about you and your franchise? Uh, kidstrong.com. And then I'm on LinkedIn. Uh, if you just look up Matt Sharp and Kidstrong in the search bar, you know, that will pop up. Uh, but everything is just at kidstrong.com. We have all of our contact information there. We put updates there. Um, and then I try to be fairly, I try to be fairly uh, active on LinkedIn as well. Awesome. Matt, thank you so much for coming on the episode. I really appreciate you shared a ton of insights. I appreciate it, man. It's always fun. All right. Bye for now. See ya. Thank you so much for listening to this episode of the Franchise Marketing Podcast. If you found this episode useful, share it with a friend and subscribe now so you don't miss out on any upcoming episodes. And until then, happy marketing.